Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Good morning. Madam Chairperson, Honorable Yang Amat Berbahagia Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, Tun Dr. Siti Hasma, Honorable Members of Parliament, my lords, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gaza Genocide Forum and Exhibition. On behalf of the organizers, I wish to express appreciation for this opportunity in addressing such a significant gathering, a gathering of noble and caring people for a noble and caring purpose. What was conceived and developed for the past two months in Kuala Lumpur has now turned to reality. That is to have a roadshow forum on the Gaza killings here in London, where the world meets. This forum and exhibition on the genocide in Gaza is a collaboration between the Kuala Lumpur Foundation to Criminalize War, or KLFCW, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Malaysia. Our aim is to prick the world's conscience on the Gaza catastrophe and sustain international awareness and cooperation in achieving lasting peace while continuing to effect our collective synergy in humanitarian aid. We aim to raise the awareness of the British and European public of the genocide in Gaza and to explore possible solutions for the plight of the Palestinians. Simultaneously, we galvanize efforts towards making Israel pay for its acts of killing and miming civilians in Gaza, besides causing destruction to civilian and public amenities. The world has witnessed the killing and the destruction of property and life's sustenance in Gaza only to be idled by non-intervention and non-action by the free world for crimes perpetrated and for deeds inhuman. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, further, we aim to bring Israel to justice for all its inhuman activities, the violations of human rights. We are here to ponder on the call for justice vis-a-vis -vis the violations that more than equate crimes against humanity. And on the larger plane, we are here also to campaign that war be deemed to be an international crime. I hope the figure 1,380 means something to you. For a good number of people, that figure means nothing more than a hint of news that spell death in Gaza. To us in Malaysia, it means something devastating, something that is brutal and murderous. The figure 1,380 is the number of innocent human beings killed through the process of choice and design by the soldiers of Israel between December 2008 and February this year. That is the number killed by Israel soldiers, and of 1,380, 33.3% represent women and children. More than 100 are still missing, perhaps beneath the heaps of debris and concrete slabs. Or they could be the ones who were rendered disintegrated by powerful American-made weapons. 16 Palestinian medical personnel were killed and 25 injured while performing their duties. Israel reportedly suffered 13 deaths on account of Hamas rocket shots. Admittedly, no radio or television stations or newspapers ignored the news about the Gaza annihilation. 
For a while, the whole world was somewhat ablaze about Gaza being attacked and the ensuing destruction and deaths. The question that propped up was how justified were the Zionist attacks, inclusive of the aerial and artillery onslaught on homes, hospitals, United Nations premises, and schools? The general Western media are well poised to a denial syndrome. They depict and maintain that the excessive Israeli attacks on the innocent people of Gaza were justified under the name of self-preservation. If this be so, then there must be something wrong with our sense of justice. Fair-minded witnesses began to describe the incessant attacks on the civilians of Gaza by Israel as unjustified and disproportionate. While Israel maintained its innocence by countering that the attacks were safeguards and not disproportionate vis-a-vis -vis the security of the so-called homeland Israel. With almost 1,400 dead in Gaza pursuant to the multi-angle and multi-facade attacks, how does one justify the onslaught? We reeled back with sadness when we first learned that the United Nations the Security Council in particular was seen to be such a lame entity, even in the wake of devastations and deaths by a neighboring state. The Security Council failed to effect ceasefire and total stoppage of the attacks despite the high-sounding Security Council Resolution 1860, which was passed on 8th January 2009 with the United States, as usual, abstaining. The special session of the UNGA that ensued also did not manage to bring solution to the catastrophe. This is the case of a regime killing their immediate neighbor with intent to annihilation without any sense of quid pro quo. What resulted has been an act of genocide, nothing less. This is what the figure 1,380 stands for. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, realizing that the Security Council resolution was insufficient, Malaysia on January 12th initiated a special session of its parliament to condemn the Israeli attack on Gaza and called for a lasting peace process. Finally, at the instance of Malaysia, Brazil, and a few other concerned states, petitioned the United Nations to recognize the then endemic human sufferings in Gaza, both in terms of loss of life, as well as of property and life sustenance facilities. Not only are the UN resolutions empty and hollow sounding, Security Council leaders were also exposing a certain degree of ignorance in respect of the human sufferings. Those unjustified and disproportionate attacks by Israel were in reality a testing political ground for the aspirant Israel Prime Minister and his cohorts in Tel Aviv on the eve of the Israeli national election. In a way, it was a political ploy and a show-off it was a ploy to gain political mileage, which perhaps was more gainful for the leaders, for the personalities concerned. And so it was acceptable to the Zionist regime to attack and violate all known tenets of international law and human rights. Gaza also became the testing ground of lethal weaponry, including the devastating white phosphorus that was strewn and scattered from the sky down to innocent schoolchildren and civilians.